안녕하세요. 서울대학교 보람의병원 이호입니다. Greetings. I'm Professor Iho of Seoul University Boramae Hospital. Today I'm going to talk about flapless surgery. When placing an implant, flapless surgery can be utilized and by flapless surgery, this means no elevation or minimal elevation of mucoperiosteal flap. You can see that in the healed extraction socket, without making incision, drilling is done or when immediate implant placement is done, flap is not reflected and implant is placed thereafter. Let's compare flapless surgery with flap surgery. In surgical aspect, in terms of time, discomfort experienced by the patient, post-op pain, swelling, and the discomfort experienced by the surgeon during surgery time, flapless surgery is much more favorable. Let's look at biological aspect. According to histological research, Flapless surgery is more favorable in terms of number of blood vessels around the implant and the diameter of blood vessel. Wound healing speed is faster. Also, flapless surgery is known to be more favorable in terms of prevention of hard and soft tissue resorption. Compared with existing flap surgery, flapless surgery definitely has many advantages. Let's look at the advantages of flapless surgery. It preserves the circulation of blood flow, soft tissue architecture, and hard tissue volume. It causes less bleeding during surgery and less necessity for suture, thus leading to decreased surgical time. As a result, there is a less post-op pain, swelling, and we can also improve patient comfort. Patient healing can be accelerated and patient can immediately resume normal hygiene care. It does have disadvantages. Let's look at the downside of flapless surgery. As we all know, we only see what's on the surface, so we cannot see what's on the inside. The critical downside is that we cannot see what's under. We may place implant in the wrong position, the implant angulation may be wrong, or the implant placement depths can be wrong. There can be many different issues. So, however, this can be overcome by using digital dentistry. We can overcome such disadvantage of flapless surgery by using digital dentistry. We can analyze what the bone is going to be like sufficiently under the surface and do simulation accordingly and thereafter we can fabricate guide in order to avoid blind surgery. We'd be able to overcome the downside of flapless surgery in this way. Another downside is that we are not looking at the bone, we are not reflecting flap. So there can be a lot of bone heating upon drilling. The bone particle that comes out when we drill is in general reddish white, but when there's bone heating, it comes out as beige. We need to be aware about bone heating in order to successfully osseointegrate implant. There is high possibility of bone heating if the heat exceeds 47 degrees. So when we do flapless surgery, we need to do irrigation often here and there, and we need to use a sharp drill and do drilling gently. We need to prevent excessive force from being applied. 
We should not skip from small size to big size, but we need to gradually increase the diameter and we need to do it sequentially. By doing this, we can prevent bone heating that can accompany flapless surgery. The two disadvantages that I've mentioned can be prevented, however, there's two factors that we cannot overcome. First is when we need to contour osseous topography. When GBR is necessary, flammless surgery cannot be used. Second, when there's lack of keratinized tissue, we cannot use flapless surgery either. The border between keratinized tissue and non-keratinized tissue is as shown. If implant is positioned here and here, in this case, if we do flapless surgery, the remaining keratinized tissue will be only this much. We cannot use flapless surgery in this case. We need to make palatally inclined incision and we need to pull the palatal keratinized tissue buccally. We need to do open flap surgery in order to secure the desired keratinized tissue. This is a patient case. The patient is 62-year-old male patient with controlled diabetes. Implant placement was planned. Before surgery, you need to observe carefully using your eyes and hands. We need to evaluate the bone condition using CT. In the case of this patient, you can see there's sufficient bone volume visually, and I also confirmed the sufficient bone volume on CT. As planned in the desired position, without reflecting flap, drilling was performed. You need to check here and then the particles that come out so that there is no excessive bone heating. Depth gauge was used to check how much drilling was performed and the thickness of soft tissue is checked indirectly. Four point five by ten millimeter TS four implant was placed. One point you need to think about when you do flapless surgery is implant placement depths. This is bone level internal type implant, so it needs to be placed 1 mm subcrestal. We need to also check whether there is a sufficient biologic width, so we need to place the implant sufficiently deeply. Compared with the drilling process, the placement depth adjustment process can take up more time. A way to overcome this disadvantage is to utilize a digital guide system. In this case, guide was not used, so careful attention was paid. A lot of time was taken to adjust the placement depths. The scale of the implanted driver is from 0 to 5, and I am slowly adjusting placement depths to make it around 4. When it seems like excessive torque might get applied, you can also utilize reverse turn. The final implant placement depth is about 4 mm. Healing abutment was connected. This was how surgery was closed. This is post-op panoramic image and CT image. Let's compare pre-op and post-op. Implant has been placed in appropriate position with appropriate angle and depth. 
Her thesis has been delivered. Now I would like to summarize. The disadvantages of flapless surgery can be overcome using digital guide. Compared with flap surgery, there is higher possibility of bone heating with flapless surgery, so we need to pay attention to cooling. There are clear advantages of flapless surgery over flap surgery. However, there are a couple of cases where flapless surgery cannot be applied. There is contraindications. First, when there is a need of GBR, and when there is inadequate keratinized tissue, we cannot use it. This is what I've prepared thus far if you're interested in more in-depth knowledge and hands-on practice which can equip you with practical clinical tips that you can actually apply, please refer to offline master course. I look forward to your interest. Thank you for watching.